hard to predict the uh, YouTube live uh, option, but for some reason it's taking a little longer. This has happened. There we go. I don't know why it should just be like a predictable number of seconds, huh? <laughs> I guess different periods of uh, the day or night can make it more or less easier to stream. So either way, nice to be with you all once again this weekend. In this case, for our text reading, Proverbs chapter 3, we'll be reading the entire Hebrew and then the Greek, my translation of both, which will be published soon. I'll let you know. Now, right before this show, like, I literally stopped the video and then started this one. <laughs> You'll see me with the same shirt and everything. I did a video I'm going to upload that's very important. It's about Gobekli Tepe, a place that many of you know I have theorized for several years. It appears to be the location where Noah, before the flood, for several decades, gathered, contained, maintained, and managed the reproduction of species all the way through to the point where the flood began. And then during the flood, it was buried by sand. Not by hand, as many people speculate for really strange reasons, if, if any. <laughs> uh, now, the water moves that much sand, not people, for no known reason whatsoever. Um, at a time during which other records also speak of this same event, which would have been sufficient to wipe out the types of records and civilizations that would have explained Gobekli Tepe. So, right after this video, I finished it. I haven't uploaded it. Within a half hour of finishing this video, this text reading, that video will be uploaded. And I, when you get a chance, you should watch it. Because there's a recent find at Gobekli Tepe that I believe is consistent with my theory that that location is consistent with what we read about with regard to Noah and the things he had to do before the flood. I don't know of any other theory, as I explained in that video, that credibly associates that location with a historical event that we know about not only from the Bible, but from numerous, if not all, ancient civilizations for which we have records covering that time. So, you know, um, you know, they there's questions about the date and everything. I talk about that as well in the video. So see that video that I upload after this show. Welcome all of you who are able to join me for our text reading. Thank you for joining me yesterday, by the way, if you were able to. I also uploaded a, a redo of CW Jaw Talk number 39. If you weren't able to watch that before, Maybe you started watching it and you saw that there was an inconsistency with the video and the audio. The redo corrects all that. I don't know what happened. The audio got cut right, but the video didn't. So I think it was just a YouTube issue. And um, I still have that incorrect video in the CW Jaw Talk playlist. I'll probably remove it tonight or tomorrow, and then I'll put the redo in, in its place. So if you decide you want to link that video on Psalm 2 and 4Q246, Son of God text, as pre-Christian evidence, Jesus is the biblical Messiah, now it will, it will be appropriate, okay? If you see any other problems with any other of my videos, just let me know. Occasionally I do a quality check when I can. I'll watch an older video just to see what I said before, you know, and I just happen to notice this one. So, if you happen to notice a similar thing, let me know. Okay, who do we have here? Everett, thank you so much for joining me. Good to see you too. Yes, I enjoy our live shows. They're a good way for us to come together and bond with each other over spiritual thoughts and ideas and to express ourselves and get to know each other a little bit. We don't have many other options, and so we definitely should be doing everything we can to, to do this. Although, you know, this is, is a, a good amount, right? And whatever each person wants to do with others is fine. But 
I think doing it once or twice a week is a good way for us to maintain our association, our, our thinking, and still stay active with our responsibilities in life, right? Um, now, I may not be here next weekend. I'll let you know, though. Okay, so I'll put up a, a post in the community section and a tweet indicating, um, yeah, I'll be here Saturday. I'll, I'll do it by Tuesday. I'll do it early in the week. I'm just not sure because I have some work that some I'm getting busy with different things and some of it's out of my state. You know, I'm in California, but I'm licensed to do insurance claims work in many other states. So I, I've been getting requests to do out of state work, which is good. Now, some assignments have to you know be properly negotiated and then uh, there needs to be um, travel arrangements and things. So I'm not quite sure on timing yet uh, for the pending item. That's really what's holding me up in terms of knowing whether I'll be here. I'll know that by Tuesday. So then I'll let you know. And then I will be taking a week or two off sometime between now and the end of the year. So what do we got? We got two. We've got about 10 weeks left in this year. So, you know, I'll probably take two off. I may be going to work next week. And so I'll, I'll be here seven to eight more weeks out of the 10 remaining. That's not bad, right? Okay. Betsy also, good to see you. And Ricky, very nice. Anyone else? Welcome to the live stream. It's a text reading. Right, this is where we read the translations I've done to date. I've been studying the biblical languages seriously for about 30 years. But in a, I've been aware of them and been thinking about them in in a fundamental way getting to know them for about 35 years since I was about 15 or 16. But but you know, well, I guess it'd have to be around 30 two or 33 because by by 17 18 i was on fire you know? <laughs> of course i didn't know like everything then but i was really you know i was reading at robertson's grammar by then i didn't understand it all i was reading it and i was absorbing everything i could in association with other grammars and then also continuing my apologetics and watching our ministry as a pioneer and i was very active and then all the other things i've talked about before and that i've done so either way when I think about it, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and, and I feel confident in my abilities to present to all of you my translations of these texts. I feel comfortable talking about them and discussing them with anyone. I've shown that publicly and in writing for quite some time. I'm happy to do so again and probably will at the right time, um, certainly in writing. And I do so regularly publicly in this way and where I can with others. So with these text readings, we analyze the things I've translated. Um, I spent a lot of time with Proverbs, 10 years minimum, if you look at my tweets and things, right? More actually, but really seriously, right? Well over eight, eight, nine. Um, I was really, when I recognized, hey, this I can do this and this has to be done. And then I've been doing a lot of other things in association with that, biblical studies, history, languages, linguistics, all that stuff. So I should know something, right? <laughs> Um, I don't claim to know everything or to be special, but I do claim to know what I know and to be able to defend what I have claimed. I don't claim things that don't have a basis in credibility or in argumentation or in the languages that we're discussing. If you think that's incorrect, then like anyone else, you are free to uh, express yourself and tell me where you think I'm wrong. Outside of that, that's as much as I can do, but I'm willing to do everything I can. I have a lot more I'm going to do. After Proverbs, Greek, and Hebrew, we're going to do the four Gospels. I've already done much of them. I refer to them as the great message. Uh, great great messages, another way of looking at uh, the word gospel or the, the Greek word that's from, Gwangleon. Um, I've done James. I've done Jude. done a few of the smaller ones, right? I'd like to do Proverbs. I've done a lot of the early Genesis chapters. I would like to do Proverbs. I'm talking about publishing now. Proverbs, then the four great messages, then Revelation. Right. I think that, I guess I'd have to put James in there too, because I've already done it, right? And Jude. And right? so that would actually work out well. I could do kind of a progressive, but to me, Proverbs, right? Actually, it'd be great if I had Genesis, Proverbs, 
of four great messages and revelation. I'm not saying that, that, that others aren't equal to or just as good as in that way or in a spiritual, biblical way. They're different ways, though, right? So when I look at them as complementing each other in certain ways, important ways, it would be, at least to the extent that I've been able to represent them, right? That would be a good mix. I'm not talking about, like, canonization or anything. I'm talking about what fits, right? What kind of goes together? What would give you somewhat of a complete picture? You know what I'm saying? Like, you get wisdom in Proverbs. You'd get Jesus in the four great messages, and then you would get the future and some early uh, first century stuff in Revelation. I think Genesis would be good too. Um, so, because then you'd have the beginning, right? And it would fit, right? Especially with John. That'd be, that'd be kind of good. I think if I could get Genesis, that, that'd take a lot longer though. Because <laughs> you got the Greek and Hebrew for Genesis. Whereas in the New Testament, right, once I get done with Proverbs, then I'm just in Greek, right? Which just takes, it's not as, it doesn't take as much time. Um, I have actually think Hebrew is easier in one sense when you're, when you have set your mind to it and are un- understanding it and thinking about it. Because it's sim- or simpler in some ways, right? There's, Words you can omit, there's verbs you can omit and still say the same thing. Um, I guess you could say the same thing for Greek. But, you know, people aren't like speaking these languages often, you know. <laughs> I guess Hebrew, right? Modern Hebrew is pretty similar in some ways to biblical Hebrew. This vocabulary is basically the difference. And some, you know, uh, elements of the language. But Greek is much different today than it was in the first century. Not like in every way. There's it's some structural similarities, of course, but it's not the same. Okay, there's Greek throughout, you know, different periods of time in the past as well. Different types, right? Different dialects. <clears throat> and that's true of every language. So we now have to make sure that we're understanding the language according to how it was used at the time or within the relative time that we're uh, studying. That having been said, Let's get to our text readings, right? We got text. Let's go. Let's bring it up. And so this shouldn't be a long show. We'll talk about a few things extendedly, but we don't have like a big note on the giants like we did last week on Proverbs 2. So this should go a little quicker. And then once we're done, I'll go ahead and upload. It might take, you know, up to a half hour or so to upload it and get the th- the thumbnails pretty easy. I'll do that. And then, uh, so within an hour, it'll be up. I think you should see that. The recent finding, you can look at that on your own, but I do read from a few articles, but it's how I understand it that I want you to see because it'll make more sense how I believe, why I believe it's consistent with my theory about Gobekli Tepe being where Noah kept the animals before the flood. Okay, now tax reading, it's time. Or chapter three. Now we're reading from the online edition at the Christian Witnesses of Jaw discussion forum, which has limited membership at this time and activity, but that's by design, right? Because I can't manage it effectively. There are many people who are members, but they've been, they know other than hosting my translations and maybe a few things that come up, most things take place here on the YouTube channel in the comments or by message or email. Um, Maybe we'll use the Christian Witnesses of Jaw discussion forum more in the future. But right now, I'm just hosting my translations there. I will try to open it up to more people, maybe to everybody. Maybe I'll make it public and just... I don't know. I don't know if I could manage a forum that's public like that right now. I definitely couldn't. I'd have to have help. Or or maybe just make it so everyone could read all the translations, right? You wouldn't have to be a member that way to read what I put I put in there especially since we're not really using the boards for discussion. Now, there's some prior threads that might be helpful on some subjects, but I could always just leave them locked. So I have some ideas, right? We'll get to it. But we're going to read from the translations that are online there right now that I'm still editing to be identical with the printed edition that's coming out soon, okay? It's got several very good appendices, one that I had to recently do that I moved a note from, I've talked about before, 
where I was trying to show the parallels between Micah 5 and Proverbs 8.35 and just got too complicated in the note. So rather than make it, you know, untenable or unusable in that way, it just was too complicated. There's many notes, many translations, but there's more smooth notes. This was a little thing I tried to do similar to what I did in that video where I showed the comparisons. So I've moved that to an appendix along with the other two. And uh, we're almost ready to go, everyone. Get that out. Let's get Proverbs out. And maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll do some divine name or Trinity stuff. Who knows? Or I'll do the four great messages, right? Maybe I should just stay on the Bible. Translation. Probably that's what we need most. Okay, let's go. Not that we can't find the truth with the Bibles we have today. We definitely can. But, you know, the better we can make God's Word understandable, why not, right? Uh, I see that as absolutely a good thing if you're capable and able to represent it properly and defend yourself and uh, not bring reproach, you know what I'm saying? So my goal is to make God's Word, his, the history of His people, and these teachings and the wisdom, and the knowledge of Jesus and His early apostles and followers available to as many people as possible. I believe in most cases it, it speaks for itself. Some of it you have to have knowledge of history and events and or different imagery and understanding of uh, terms and concepts. But for the most part, the Bible is universally understandable and applicable. I'm not saying that everything in the ancient times of the Bible is applicable today, like animal sacrifices and things, but people still do that. And they were applicable at that time for reasons that I've discussed before and elsewhere as well. Namely, to maintain a relationship with God because people were sinning in his presence in a way that he did not create us to tolerate. So there's been a toleration since Eden that not only God's people, but other cultures have shown to other beings their submission and and repentance for transgressing spirits by giving up their property, right? Giving up things of value to them, which in the ancient times are what animals represented, along with the blood, which appears to have some physical, spiritual significance, right? At least according to the Bible. Let's get to the text, right? Chapter 3. This is the online edition. Always refer to the printed edition especially as I'm still updating the online edition to match the printed edition. You're not going to see, like, you don't see any notes here. This used to have a bunch of notes, like in brackets, I would give alternate readings. I don't want to busy up this online version. And in the printed edition, it's not busied up. It's able to be captioned and structured in a way that is what you would expect. And I only have really extended notes in a couple places. One on the giants that we talked about last week in chapter 2. And then in chapter 8, of course, right? Chapter 8 is a note gold mine, right? We'll get to it. But that's appropriate. There are so, Even in addition to the appendix, appendix A, that is an extension of the comparisons and uh, similarities between Jesus and wisdom from my article over 13 years ago on watching the ministry. Jaw loves her, Jesus, his son, the word. I got a lot more and I go into it. But but the notes to chapter eight have even more. They, they I mean, you know, it's it's really incredible when I got into it and I just knowing what I know and had learned and, and doing what I'm doing and, and and having done what I already did, I realized this is incredible, right? The the identifications, right? The Micah 5, Proverbs 8 stuff that I mentioned that we've talked about before. Now, that's all in addition to what I wrote in that article 13 years ago, plus so much more, right? All right. Let's get to chapter three. Right? I'm just pumped up. Are you pumped up? Right? I was pumped up yesterday. I'm, pumped. I'm always pumped up. I try to stay excited, right? Brian, why not? I, of course, I can manage and I'm calm and talk to people normally. I'm with you guys. I'm pumped up, right? I'm here talking about the Bible, talking about God. We're trying to inspire people with knowledge, understanding, wisdom, 
Proverbs right now. Let's go. You can see I used the form of the divine name Ja'o. Talk about in the introduction. That's something I decided to do several months ago after the finding from the 13th century. The curse that the Israelites wrote after the end of the promised land as Moses commanded them and they used the name Ya'o. No way you can get Yahuwah or Yahweh from yod He wah Not without adding a whole bunch of stuff that isn't there and we don't have to do it. It's one God the Father all over the place, all over the case, uh, all over again, everybody, only in this case with the divine name, right? I'm talking about clarity, right? What it actually says, not what you think it says or what you can make it say. <laughs> Chapter three, Hebrew translation. Here we go. <clears throat> translation of the Hebrew. Let me take a little drink here since I'll be reading, right? Sometimes I get a little dry because of the reading. I get pumped up. Remember, right before this video, I literally finished recording about a 20-minute video on a recent find from Gobekli Tepe and my interpretation of it that I think is something you'll be interested in, okay? So give me about an hour after this video. I'll upload it. And then I think you should consider it and share it with people, right? This is the stuff they need to see and be thinking about, right? Get them thinking, right? We can't always just tell them like many Trinitarians do, they're going to hell. I would never tell them that, in fact, right? <laughs> uh, unless, you know, God tells me to say that. But, right, there are other ways we can... Now, I'm not saying Trinitarians always do that. Don't freak out, Trinitarians. Some of you do, though. Some of you go nuts, right? We know that. That's a fact. Well, I've seen it many times, okay? So, uh, other than those, though, my Trinitarians often can be, they can be logical when they want to. So, they should use this as well. All of us should be using archaeological evidence that supports the Bible. I don't care if you're Trinity, non-Trinity, or infinity, right? Use the evidence that supports the Bible at a minimum, right? Let's try to show a little unity. I talked about that yesterday and how the devil, right? He's trying to use unity to maintain his disunity so he doesn't collapse. Well, we've got to do something, okay? Let's show a little unity here, not always, you know, going to attack or defense. Let's try to just find something in the Bible that everybody can identify with and say, you non-biblical people who always make fun of us in the flood, explain this, right? Chapter 3, Hebrew, verse 1. <clears throat> I'm going to read it all the way through. We'll talk about a few things, and then I'm going to go to the Greek. I might stop here or there, but basically that's how we're going to proceed. And then once we're done with the Greek version, we're done. I'll say goodbye to everyone, and then I'll upload my Gobekli Tepe video. Verse 1, my son, you must not forget my law, and your heart must protectively watch my direction. Verse 2, for additional time, even years of life and peace will be added to you. Verse 3, now here we have the plus slash minus sign or minus slash plus, which as I've explained before, means we have both an addition and a subtraction between the Greek and the Hebrew text, meaning what is that, whatever is in italics in the Hebrew is not in the Greek text. Whatever is in italics in my translation of the Greek is not in the Hebrew text. I'm not saying it's not in any Greek or Hebrew text. I'm talking about the text I'm translating, which I'll identify in the introduction, which are the standard Greek and Hebrew texts that we use or that are are used in as, as well as other versions and texts to complement them that I cite in my translation. But if you see a minus sign, like if this didn't have a slash and a plus, then you know there's something in italics in the Greek that's not in the Hebrew. But in this case, the Hebrew also has a plus. So again, that's why I used them both. I explained this in the introduction. I'm just telling you now so you get familiar with it. May goodness and truth not leave you. This is verse 3. Keep them secure 
upon your neck. Write them upon the blank surface of your heart. That last part is the additional part of the Hebrew text, which is why it's in italics. Verse 4, Then your favor and good insight may be noticed by the eyes of God and by humankind. Now, let me just add here. In my printed edition of this translation of Proverbs coming soon, you'll be able to look straight across the screen, uh, the, the page. I'm looking at the screen. And I've spaced out my translation so that every single page you will see the complete text. Well, I'm, some, of, some of the texts that have additional italicized material, I let that run over to the next page and then just space the complete verses following it, because it's additional to the text on the preceding page, all of which corresponds um, to the other language on the same page. So the additional, sometimes I do allow that to run over. But basically, you'll be able to see that, though. It's not a problem the same way it would be if I had all verses not quite corresponding. But whereas here, we only see the additional part in the Hebrew of verse 3, In the printed edition of my translation, you'll be able to look right across and see the additional part in italics in the Greek translation, which we'll look at in a minute when we get there. But the printed edition definitely has that advantage, not only in marking and italicizing additional text from each language, but giving you the visual, boom, boom. You can look at it immediately, which I think is is helpful, certainly when it comes to analysis. Verse 4, then your fate, well, we read that. Verse 5, trust in Ja'ol with all your heart and do not rely on what you think you know. Verse 6, in all your travels gain knowledge about him. Then he will make clear the paths you travel. You should not become wise in your own eyes. Fear Ja'ol and turn aside from what is evil. Verse 8. Let it become as a healing to your precious flesh and may it become as a drink to your dry bones. Be sure to honor Ja'ol from your wealth and be sure to honor him from the start of everything you make. Verse 10. Then your storage rooms will be filled with an abundance, and your supply barrels will break open with fresh wine. You must not refuse correction from Ja'ol, my son, and you must not show disgust at his evidence. Verse 12, because whom Jao loves, he will openly correct, as when a father openly corrects a son with whom he is pleased. Verse 13, happy is the man who has found wisdom and the man who gains an understanding. For she is a valuable asset, a better asset than silver, and her worth is more than gold. Verse 15, she has incredibly great worth, more than corals, and anything in which you take pleasure is not equal with her. A longer life is in her right hand. In her left hand are wealth and honor. Verse 17, her roads are enjoyable paths and all her ways lead to peace. She is a tree of life to the ones who grasp at her and those holding on to her will be blessed. Verse 19, Ja'ol 
has arranged the earth with wisdom. He has established the heavens with understanding. By his knowledge, deep open, I'm sorry, deep oceans have been ripped apart and clouds sprinkle down rain. Verse 21, my son, do not allow them to leave your sight. Carefully protect wise thinking and intention. Then they will become life to your soul and mercy for your neck. Verse 23, that is when you will walk the path you choose without harm and your foot will not hit something. If you lie down, you will not be afraid. Indeed, you have laid down and your sleep has been very pleasant. Verse 25, you should not be afraid if something fearful happens suddenly or from the complete collapse of criminals, for it will come. Verse 26, because Jaol will be with your confidence. He keeps your foot from capture. You should not withhold what is good from those with authority at a time when, for God, notice it's in italics, meaning the Hebrew contains, which is why you have a plus here, what the Greek does not in italics. You should not withhold what is good from those with authority at a time when, for God, your own hand can do it. Verse 28, you should not say, to your friend, go and then return. Tomorrow I will give. When what is needed exists with you. Verse 29, you should not prepare something evil against your friend, even the one who sits with you in confidence. You should not contend with a man without good reason if he has not caused anything evil to come about against you. Verse 31. You should not become jealous at a man of violence, nor should you choose to be in any of his paths. Because acting crooked is disgusting to Ja'ul, and his counsel is with those who tell the truth Verse 33, a curse from Ja'ol is in the home of the wicked ones, but he will bless the home of righteous people. If it has to do with those who show contempt, he will show contempt. And if it has to do with those who are poor, he will will show them favor. Verse 35, our last verse of chapter 3, of my translation of the Hebrew of the book of Proverbs, and then we'll do the Greek. Wise people will inherit glory, but stupid people are lifting up disgrace. Now, I'll take a look at the chat while we move over to the Greek, just to see how you guys are doing there. So let me bring up the Greek text so I'm prepared. I'll bring you guys in. We'll finish up our text reading in just a moment. But again, let me take a quick look at the chat. Looks like TKS joined us. Nice to have you. And 13 above. Very nice. Hello and peace to you. Very good. Okay, everything looks good in the chat. Let's get back to our text reading, finishing up with my translation of the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, the entire chapter. We'll discuss anything that comes up that is of, you know, necessary importance. If it's clear, I think everything has been 
fairly clear. If you have any questions, if you don't understand my translation, or if you think I'm incorrect, then feel free to put it in the comments. But mostly, and you know, of course, if you have something I made an error on, of course. But but it's probably easier if you if there's something you don't understand, let me know, and we'll go back and talk about it. I don't detect anything that would be unusually difficult at this point. I try to explain certain things, especially additional readings, so you understand what's going on if you're reading one translation or the other, and it doesn't quite line up with yours, right? Chapter 3, verse 1. Son, my laws you must not forget. And your heart must protect my sayings, because a longer existence and years of life and peace will be added to you. Verse 3. Now, this is the verse, the first one where we saw the minus slash plus in the Hebrew. So, whatever, whatever is in italics is additional in the Greek. Verse 3. May charitable gifts and belief never fail you. You must fasten them upon your neck and you will find mercy. There's the additional part there, and you will find mercy. See, it's not usually, it's not a problem. And again, I explained this in the introduction if you want more, more um, specifics. We can't say for sure exactly which reading, the Greek or the Hebrew, is the more correct. Now, again, these are ancient texts that have been preserved over a long period of time in multiple languages. And the types of additions, right? So this, this way you see most of it is, is actually completely consistent. And the additions really aren't, they're not like unusual or problematic within the context of, of the book or the chapter or the verse itself. Uh, sometimes they are significant and important, and we'll discuss those. But we, while there is great correspondence between the Masoretic text tradition and the Dead Sea Scroll and other ancient text tradition, there are some differences. And sometimes those differences, like I discussed in the introduction to my coming translation, show that the Greek version we have that's most ancient at times agrees with the Dead Sea Scroll or other ancient Hebrew Aramaic texts, not the Masoretic. So we have to be open to that possibility. All right. Verse 4, Then you must respect what is good in the sight of the Lord and humankind. Now, that's not an, in the Hebrew of verse 4, chapter 3. It uses God. But in the Greek, it uses Lord. It doesn't use the divine name. Where it does use the divine name in the Hebrew text, I've talked about this in prior videos and in the introduction again, I put the divine name in brackets, like in verse 7. And then I translate what's in the actual Greek text. Because again, we're primarily dealing with, if not exclusively in Proverbs and the Greek, post-first century texts that are similar to the New Testament post-first century texts that use surrogates for the divine name where all first century and earlier texts of the Septuagint actually use the form of the divine name. Okay, and of course, the Hebrew Aramaic uses the divine name. Verse 4, we read that. Verse 5, you must continue to have confidence in God Jaol with a complete heart. And you must not proceed based on your own wisdom. Verse 6. In all your travels, you must make known wisdom. This way, you may clearly understand the paths you choose. Then your foot may not stumble along the way. Verse 7, you must not be wise with yourself. Instead, you must fear God Jaol, and you must turn away from everything that is evil. Then it will become a cure to your body and a healthy treatment to your bones. Verse 9, you must honor the Lord Jaol from your righteous labors, and from your fruits of righteousness, you must lead the way to him, that your storage rooms may be filled with a satisfying amount of wheat, and your vats 
They overflow with wine. Verse 11. Son, you must not get tired of Lord Jaol's discipline, and you must not become weary by his harsh reprimanding. Now, let me stop and break here, because often people in the Watchtower, when they read a verse like this, the Watchtower applies this in a way that allows them to be the ones giving you the reprimand. (laughs) We don't do that here, okay? So if you're from the Watchtower, or you're new, and you're thinking, oh, no, no. We're just reading the Bible and telling you what Jaol will do. We only hold you accountable, all of Matthew 18, according to something that's clearly a sin against someone or us in a way that is not acceptable and not just a mistake, right? You're not listening. It's clearly something that with evidence-based, therefore we bring another person. Then the whole congregation, not some secret meeting where a limited number of people decide and no one else knows what happened. You must not get tired of Lord Jaol's discipline, and you must not become weary by his harsh reprimanding. For whom Lord Jaol loves, he educates, but he will relentlessly correct every son whom he accepts. It's an honor to be accepted by Jaol. It's an honor to be drawn by the Father, as Jesus says in John 6, to the Son. But not everyone accepts him, as we also read in John 6. Verse 13, Proverbs 3, Greek translation. Happy is a happy man, I'm sorry, is he who found wisdom and one who, though immortal, recognized design. Now remember, I believe all of this meaning in English and translation is consistent entirely with the Greek text. So you should have full confidence citing this or the Hebrew text. And if you can't defend it, I will. Verse 14, for it is better to have business dealings with her than it is, it's talking about wisdom, than it is to have a storage room full of gold and silver. It's better to have business dealings with her than anything that would lead to material wealth. That's what we're being told. She is more valuable than very expensive stones. And the additional part in the Greek text, no one who is evil will be able to oppose her. She is recognizable to everyone who comes near to her. Back to the consistent part with the Hebrew. And every precious thing is not worthy of her. Verse 16, for a longer existence and years of life. What did Jesus say? Who of you by being anxious can add one cubit to your life? And he's the way, the truth, and the life. And Adam all are dying and Jesus all are being made alive. For a longer existence and years of life are in her right hand, and in her left hand are wealth and glory. In the additional part in the Greek of verse 16, proceeding from her mouth is a righteous law, and upon her tongue she wears law and compassion. Verse 17, her ways... I often have, uh, I'll just break here real quickly. I often get LGBTQ homo people who say, have some compassion. My comment to them is, have some compassion? Where are you having compassion on people's, even your own rear end? (laughs) Right? Show some compassion to your physical anatomy and the physical anatomy of other people. Show some compassion to us heteros whom you've tossed aside and let go of in terms of friendship so you can abuse an excretory waste organ that clearly isn't designed for your penis, (laughs) right? Or for someone else's. What did it say right here? A happy man is, in verse 13, a happy man is he who found wisdom and one who, though immortal, recognized design. It looks like I didn't update the the italicized part here. We go back to the Hebrew, verse 13. 
What did it say? I'll do that later. Remember, I'm updating the online, but there's an, 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 a plus there. I want to see what that was. Happy is the man who found wisdom and the man who gains an understanding. Okay, so the additional part should be the part about the mortal recognized design right here. So this should be italics and is in the printed edition. You homos aren't recognizing design. So you can't on the one hand say in the additional part of verse 16, have compassion like wisdom, even though that's not what you're doing. You want us to have compassion for abuse is what you're saying, right? Um, how about you have some wisdom and recognize design, okay? And then you'll have some wisdom by showing compassion according to the design. You see, we're consistent. We show wisdom by recognizing design, a design, even though we're just immortal, and we also have compassion by not abusing people's anus, right? Uh, there's no reason to do that. It has no benefit whatsoever. It's just a simulation of an actual healthy act that has nothing but destruction as its consequence and result. So why you homos care so much about that type of act is a genuine mystery. You sure never want to talk about it. And you don't appear to recognize design. So we got a problem there, right? A little bit of a problem there. Uh, no reason for you to bring up compassion there. Verse 17, her ways are good paths. And all her footprints, talking about wisdom, are made in peace. Verse 18, she is a tree of life to all who hold on to her. And she cannot fail any who rely on her. Pay attention. As they rely upon the Lord. I talk about this a little more, of course, in my translation appendix. And as I do some of this others, uh, other parallels we've read with respect to wisdom in Jesus, I just can't stop and comment on all of them here. And the notes are plentiful on all this we've been reading. Either way, I do have a note here in the online edition that I'll keep. I will be keeping some caption notes in the online edition. I'm just removing most, but not every single one. If I think it's important... I leave a couple, a few intertextual notes in brackets. Mostly, though, I leave these caption notes. And the note, right, the italicized portion, which is additional in the Greek to the Hebrew, is as they rely upon Lord. And then the note, note to G plus 318, as they rely upon bracket lo the Lord. This is the reading of A, or Codex Alexandrinus, and what appears to be in my reading of the text, later hands in B and Sinaiticus. B is a uh, term for Vaticanus, Codex Vaticanus. These are all 3rd, 4th, 5th century manuscripts, you know, of more, more, more of the complete manuscripts of the Bible. Whether Jewish or Christian in origin, the reading puts reliance upon wisdom on the same level as reliance upon the Lord. Right? And obviously that doesn't mean that they're identical because we not only read in chapter 8 that she's created, but we read earlier that what? That Jah used her. Was, we read it in the Hebrew. It might be in the Greek too. Let's see. I forget which verse it was. Or it might be coming up. Either way, we read in the Hebrew where Jah you, in wisdom founded the earth, right? But he's the one who did it. He created using wisdom, just like we read according to wisdom in chapter 8 and about Jesus in the New Testament. It's Jah doing it. So it doesn't make them the same. We are able to rely on wisdom as the Lord. Why wouldn't we be able to do that? It's Jah, it's personified wisdom, Jah's son, whom he uses and was there at creation, his firstborn. Trinitarians think this kind of elevation and honor somehow means equation. They're just assuming that, though, right? So what, are they going to say that wisdom is equal to Jah? And that Jah is the creator of wisdom at the same time, right? See, that's why I say it wouldn't matter if they called Jesus created explicitly beyond ways that we believe he is in the New Testament or in Proverbs 8. They don't care. And just say it's eternal anyway. So, you know, you have to be careful how far you go with Trinitarians on this stuff. To you and me, it might be clear. To them, it might not. <laughs> So this is some more information on this whole additional part of the Greek to chapter 3, verse 18. 
uh, that I think is important in some way to show that you can have this sort of parallel reliance between the Lord, which in the Hebrew would, um, in, in the Hebrew talks about God, or even in the Greek edition part, as a rely on the Lord, right? Because it's talking about wisdom. So this would have to be talking about God, Ja'ol. But that doesn't make them equal. You can still elevate them in a parallel sense, like we see also with the worship of Psalm and the honor given to him in 1 Chronicles 29 20. But here, like with Jesus in the New Testament, you can have a parallel. You can have, like with Jesus and allowing others to sit with him on God's throne, right? Which is where he's sitting, according to Revelation chapter 3. But that doesn't make them equal. There can be a paralleling of individuals or beings who are clearly otherwise shown not to be the same or equal. And that's what I believe we have here between God and wisdom, the Lord and wisdom, according to the additional part in the Greek. Verse 19, God, Jah, O, laid a foundation for the earth with wisdom. Yeah, it was coming up. <laughs> See, it's God, Jah, O, who's doing it, right? Creating in the Hebrew. It's not wisdom doing it. Wisdom's putting things together as a skilled worker after God creates it. According to Jesus in John 5, 10, 19, he's able to watch, he has to watch the Father first, temporal distinction, and then he can do likewise, hamoyos, similar, not the same in time or act. It's similar. He learns from the Father and then he does the same thing. So either way, he's taught by the Father, just like he tells us in John 7, 17 and 18. It's incredible, right? Okay, away from Trinity. God, you all laid a foundation for the earth with wisdom. And he prepared the heavens with intelligent design. I believe that is absolutely the meaning of the Greek text there. And the Hebrew, uh, I forget what it was, but there was another part. Well, we read it here in the additional part of the Greek. Recognize design. Right? And it's talking about intelligence, wisdom. It's talking about how God created, right? Well, it's by, it's, he's got intelligent design. He used intelligent design according to the actual biblical text. This is not a new concept. This is actually pretty obvious, right? But it's actually biblical. Verse 20, by his insight, deep, ocean, deep oceans were broken apart and clouds release, release a fresh light rain. Verse 21, son, may you not drift away. Carefully protect my counsel and my intention. Verse 22, this way your soul may live and mercy may come to be around your neck. Additional part in the Greek to the Hebrew. It will become a cure to your flesh and a treatment to your bones. Now, there was another part that was similar in another proverb, but this is additional to this text. Verse 23, this so you may go forth as one who has been convinced with peace for all your chosen paths. Then your foot is not likely to strike something. Verse 24, for if you sit down, it will be without fear. And if you should rest, you will sleep pleasantly. You are not to be afraid because of the terror which comes up. We talked about this yesterday. CW Jaw Live discussion number 34. Nor because of the thoughtless actions by people who are without God when they occur. For the Lord Jaw Ol will be over all your chosen paths, and he will set your foot firmly in place so you are not likely to be moved. Verse 27, you should not keep your distance when it comes to taking care of those in need. If you are able to help, you should not say, leave, return, and tomorrow I will give. If it is possible for you to do good now, for you do not know what the future will be until it is here. You should not devise something evil against your friend, even the one who has trusted in you. Verse 30, you should not become hostile with a man for no reason. Otherwise, someone may work what is evil to you. Verse 31, you should not own disgraces belonging to evil men, right? You watched our people. If you don't get out of there, you're going to be owning the disgraces of those evil men who absolutely refuse to give up their position and power and authority and money over you for their false doctrine. And they've been that way for a long time. 
nor should you be zealous for their ways. For every habitual lawbreaker is dirty in Lord Jao's presence. Among righteous people, he does not need to counsel. Verse 33, God Jao's curse is in the homes of wicked people, but the residences of the righteous people are being blessed. 34 and 35, our last two verses of the Greek translation and of our text reading this Sunday. Thank you for joining me. Verse 34, the Lord is arranged in battle against arrogant people, but he shows mercy to humble people. Verse 35, wise people will inherit glory, but the wicked will exalt dishonor, which is why they act retarded all the time. That's why I use that word. It's dishonor. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. Like the book of Proverbs describes. Let me just take a quick look at the chat, see how you all were making out. Looks like you were having a good time. I hope you enjoyed our text reading of Proverbs chapter 3. Remember, after this video, which I'm going to conclude right now, I will then upload and prepare within about an hour or so of ending this show a new video showing new evidence from Gobekli Tepe, a location that I believe may be the place where Noah gathered, contained, managed, reproduced the species of animals and creatures that God told him in order to have them ready to enter the ark before the flood. So for more information on how I believe this new finding shows or supports my theory about Gobekli Tepe being that place, being the only credible connection that I've seen made historically to that location and what a site like that could have been used for, only one I know of is the one I see the one between Gobekli Tepe and the things we read about involving Noah and what he did before the flood for several decades, not only in the Bible, but in numerous other records from ancient civilizations as well. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If I'm going to be doing a live stream next weekend, I'll let you know. If I'm going to be taking time off, I'll let you know as well. Otherwise, I'll be back soon for another Christian Witnesses of Jaw Live discussion on Saturdays, followed by our text readings on Sundays, until we finish the entire book of Proverbs, during which time the printed edition, Jaw Willing, will finally be released. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and the coming Gobekli Tepe video. And my, may Jaw bless you all. In Jesus' name.